Saints is Archbishop Spalding Lacrosse tonight. The Cavaliers welcome the Greyhounds of Gilman for another A Conference matchup. Glenn Clark alongside Sean Hatley and Andrew Scally. Andrew, the Cavaliers have won back-to-back -back games, shaking off that four-game losing streak. Do you feel like this can be a turning point for them in their season? Yeah, I think anytime you can get them. Control the ball offensively, limit their turnovers, and make this a, a tough MIAA matchup. Ryan Quiswell battling with Ian Evans in the opening face-off of the contest. And that ground ball, nobody seems to want it. Finally, it will come away to Gilman as they will have possession first. Rory Cal Calhoun picking it up and bringing it in. So, that being said, Sean Hatley, because I asked the wrong question to start the broadcast to the wrong person. I was supposed to ask you <laughs> if it was going to be a turning point. I thought it was part of, part of your plan. You but tell me, part sir. Of your plan. What do you think that has gone better the last couple of times out for the Cavaliers that needs to continue for them tonight? I think you've seen them. I mean, they haven't completely eliminated the turnovers, and, and no team is going to really be able to do that, but they've seemed to, to limit them significantly based on kind of the first few games. So, oh, there's a shot there. Maury Calhoun getting the Greyhounds on the board first. And, and part of that is also the slow starts. Mm. Um, can't, can't have those slow starts. You want to get out ahead. Um, their defense has been playing well, so obviously you want to. <laughs> it's easier to play defense with a lead. Um, so unfortunately, <laughs> not going to be the case here. Yeah, yeah not going to be the case here. So as I was thinking all along, Andrew Scally, what I'd like you to do is give me some keys to tonight's game, which of course everyone knows was always my plan. <laughs> <laughs> Keep me on my toes. I like it. So for tonight, I, I talked with Coach Ford before the game, and I, this Gilman team likes to get out and transition. I think that's one of the key things. If they can limit those transition opportunities, uh, getting double digits offensively, you know, and see some of their top performers, you know, your, your Jack Newells, your Diego Garzas, you know, get going early, I think they're going to be successful. Got to have the ball in order to do that, and that's been a struggle so far. Colhoun scores first for the Greyhounds, and they go to work trying to add it to it in the early going. Gilman 3-5 on, on the season, 1-1 one one in conference play. Low shot, not on target from w Alex Wasson. It's seeing, backed up. Seeing some early shots from Gilman in the shot clock. Um, it seems like their strategy is be aggressive. Yeah, I think they're, they've let those two shots fly, you know, with what, 20 seconds maybe mm -hmm. um, left in the shot clock. So, or sorry, in, into the shot clock. Fulkino shot saved. Very good stop from Newman. Had to go a little bit lower. Shot was towards his body. But did well to make sure he protected it and held on to it. Didn't allow a rebound. That's a dangerous pass. What a snag by Bruns. Whew. Big stop there. Been seeing more and more of Ace Bruns on, on defense lately. The coaches are really trusting him to, to get out there and, and do his job. So. Great, great snag by Ace. That's a that is a play where you are bailing out one of your teammates and you are coming up big. Starters today for the Cavaliers on the attack: P.J. Pokness, Jack Newell, Alec Howard, midfield Diego Garza, Ben Duffy, and Connor Wilbur. Oh, nice move to get back inside, shooting low, but turned aside. Duffy did well to get that shot off. Rebound, it stays with the Cavaliers and. And, Glenn, if you remember, Alec Howard was a midfielder, so they're moving him down to attack, and it looks like they've moved a couple of guys around trying to find that secret sauce. In order to get this offense yeah. going, that's good movement, but the shot deflected on the way in. It stays with the Cavaliers. In goal for Gilman, Zachary Parks, sophomore. They have confidence, much like Spalding, young goalies, the talent. Still 34 seconds on the possession clock for the Cavaliers. Looks like they're pulling Garza. Which makes sense. I mean, he's been coming on, you know, pretty strong of late, putting in a couple goals each, each game. But I'm liking what I'm seeing offensively. Everybody's touching the ball, and there you go. What a stinger. What a rip by Alec Howard. Howard gets the Cavaliers on the board for the first time tonight with some fire behind it. One-one one game. There's that soon-to-be UMBC retriever. Phew. That was an impressive shot. Going to rip the hole through the netting. Watch it one more time. Give Wilbur the assist on the goal. His team leading seventh of the season for Howard. That's his eighth goal on the year. 
They finished those starters defensively. Logan Meehan, Robbie Hopper, Brock LaRochelle, and, of course, in goal, Jacob Newman. Those are your starters tonight for Spalding. Third time to the dot. And another prolonged ground ball battle opportunity in there. Nolan Philly trying to get after it and comes away with the ground ball. Big time ground ball from Philly. Great job by Filey to uh, pick up that ground ball, get it back to his goalie so they can get a nice clear. Spalding's been doing pretty well on their clears this season thus far. And I know that was that's a, it's one of the aspects of the game that Coach Phipps is, has been harping on with his guys. Spalding four and six on the season, one and two in conference play, but as we mentioned, back-to-back -back wins after they had dropped four straight, trying to build off of it, get some more confidence going here in the most important part of the season. A little bit of an extension of the defense. Oh, that's not good. Very fortunate. Ostrowski able to go back, pick up that ground ball. Second midfield unit out there right now for the Cavaliers and already under 30 seconds on the possession clock. So, Glenn, when they're extending out like that... <laughs> oh, here we go. Low to low. Jack Newell. Jack Newell makes it 2-1 Cavaliers. What I was saying is when they're, when they're extending out on them like that, they're trying to force them to beat them individually, right? And, and I think that's something that, you know, if, if we can get guys like Jack Newell and those guys going and they can beat their matchups, they're going to expose Gilmer's defense. Newell's first of the game, his 14th of the season for his team leading 20th point. Gordy Bennett gets his fifth assist on the year, 2-1 Spalding with 7.40 to play in the first quarter. No push. Ground ball picked up by Schlein, the sophomore. And the Greyhounds have it once again offensively. And again, they look like they're moving quickly to your point earlier. It looks like they have a determined attack tonight. As it just, of course, as I say that, in order to make me feel stupid, they decide to slow it down. <laughs> so it goes to show what you know, announcer, man. Dodging all the way in, but not pulling the trigger is Wollison. Oscar Wollison, one of the top scorers on the team. 14 goals on the year. Switch comes, working his way through it. Rada ball, Rada ball gets Hopper. crushed. Good body by La Rochelle. Hopper tracking it down. He tries wow, to goose it out Can keep it all in? the way towards midfield. Kept in. Wow. And wow, great ground ball by Jack Newell. Newell comes up with it. I thought for a second, as good of an effort as it was, it was not going to work out for Robbie Hopper. That's a great team effort to protect that possession. I definitely got away with one there, but you know, with a guy like Jameson, you know, tight rope in the sideline, definitely an athlete, made a big play, and yeah. now he got a good possession. Significant credit to Jameson Kaufman. Garza's shot, not on target, but it's backed up. Stays with the Cavaliers. So to your point about a quick start, this has been a much better start yep. after that initial goal for Spalding. It has, and they're definitely matching the intensity and, and the pace of play. I think Gilman came came out swinging, right? You saw a couple big dodgers from up top playing with speed, and, and Spalding came down and did the exact same thing on the offensive side. So they're going toe for toe, you know, punch for punch and going toe to toe here, and it's you know, looking good here early in the first. Ben Duffy had his hands free. doesn't take the shot. Boy, maybe a little bit too unselfish play for the Cavaliers. I think that's going to be a shot from Newell, I'm not really sure that there was ever any hope of him putting it on goal. I think Jack was surprised. I, I <laughs> think not only was he surprised, but it felt like after he was out of control, he realized the only thing he could do there to save possession was try to make some sort of shooting motion yep. to give his teammates a chance to track down backup. Yeah, Glenn, you hit the nail on the head. A little, little too unselfish there. At that point, you know, at five yards, you're giving up a five-yard shot for a three-yard. Doesn't really make a ton of sense. Good, Good look cut. inside. Back. And now, uh, no now there's backup. no backup. That's brutal. Newell wasn't able to really generate much on the shot as it was going across his body. And no backup there. And well, one thing I'm noticing on offense is the guys look like, and I said it a thousand times in the first game, confidence. It looks like they're starting to build that confidence and gain that confidence. They're, they're ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Speaking of confidence, Pile up. putting them down on the ground. My word. Crushing hit. Greyhounds hold on to possession, however. Trying to go back to work. Fulkino. Again, they're a little bit more patient this time down after they were pushing in the early going. Meyer. 
Second midfield unit out there for Gilman. Good D by Ace Bronze. And stand right there with Enright. From behind the switch. That is good, smart defense, but it does good turn stick. into a pretty good look. Good stick by La Rochelle. Meyer shot not on target. Discipline defense is what was standing out to me in that situation behind the cage. Oh, that's not discipline defense, however. Eey. Clayton Badley from Jay Wilkerson, and it's a 2-2 game. Let's see if that, put that replay up. Because I can't tell if they, there's a pick. Yeah, how did Badley get so? Yeah. Would you, would you say the defense handled that badly? Uh, it's hard to tell. I couldn't, I couldn't see if it was La Rochelle got picked off or, or what might have happened, but someone... Yeah, it might have been a little ball watching, not sure. I was just trying to make a terrible pun. That's all that I was trying to accomplish there. That's really, <laughs> i got to be honest with you, that was way too much analysis for the situation, <laughs> I'm Sean. Just, I'm, just, gotta, I'm, I'm all analysis. Yeah, right. <laughs> all, all analysis, all, all business. The time. Cerebral. They call them. Very cerebral. Eight seconds in order to get this clear. Got to get going. La pass. And that will go back out of bounds. The other way, the Pokeness was actually behind the initial target and had a shot at it but couldn't come down with it either. I mean, I'll analyze how those sticks are in a perfect line. Yeah? You know, what that says about the kid. What does it say their, about the kid? Tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> oh, you don't actually have anything prepared? No. No. Liar. <laughs> I feel quite misled, and I don't like doing that to our viewers. I think they deserve better, Sean. Uh, I missed. We, we, we missed having you, Glenn. <laughs> it's I'll great speak, to be. Great I'll to speak be. for Andrew because <laughs> right. I don't want him to actually say what he's thinking. <laughs> right. But. I missed you too, Glenn. I heard it's it's weird. I think you thought the guy, things that you said about we're never going to get back to me, but I heard Good inside ball, that's blocked down before it can get on goal is Wilkerson. Got to be a crease violation here. Yeah, he's going to let him play on. Cavaliers will look to clear it. Wilkerson, by the way, that assist on the previous goal, his ninth of the season, his 28th point. Junior. So Chris be. clearing passes. Other than that last one, the lob pass with the clock running down was not as great. But other yeah. than that, yes. Three minutes to play in this first quarter. 2-2 two -two game. Spawning to get back in front. Again, you see. Yeah, they're shutting off the adjacents. Gilman extending. Gordy Bennett trying to get free. He's got a step. Let me ask a question. Is that his shot? Once he has that step, I like the look. Okay. Right, but I mean, early in the shot clock, it, it's tough. It's one of those, you know, no, 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 shoots it, and makes you say yes. Mm -hmm. Right. It kind of plays into the, you know, that hand. But um, I'm okay with them getting the ball moving and, and getting some momentum going, getting the defense flowing. When they extend out like that, it opens up a lot and kind of plays into the hand of, of Spalding and, and they're set with that weave. Um, so uh, as long as they're trip. getting pressure, yeah, it's unfortunate. So as soon as it's touched, we will see the first extra man opportunity of the evening for the Greyhounds as Will Cook will be called for the trip. And Gilman will be man up. See Coach Ford giving Gordy Bennett some coaching on the sideline. Thirty-second penalty. First time for the Greyhounds to go man up tonight. Ten minutes in this first quarter, it seems like we were giving a little bit too much credit early on. They both came out swinging and, and right. playing fast in the last. Kind of settled, you know, settled down a little bit. Settled down a little bit. Everybody caught their breath and realized, you know, we're just playing six v six out here. And mm. unfortunately, right now, six v five. Hopefully, Spalding can kill this one off. The fake flip was good, uh, but everything after that was not so great. Give him a loose ball push. And I don't know about that one. Let's a ref, at, you know, at the midfield line making that call when they had a umpire right there on the goal line, but. Wolverson gets bailed out for a ball he couldn't catch. Three seconds remaining on the extra man. And shooting low mm. and scoring just as the penalty expires. Jay Wilkerson puts the Greyhounds back in front. I mean, that's, that's a 14-yard shot. You it, know, that's... Based on, on Jacob Newman's reaction there, it looked like he might have gotten screened just slightly because I, I, you know, I agree. It, it was deep, and it looked like it almost caught him off guard. So I don't know if he caught it the last second, knew it was low, but just couldn't get there in time. But 
Yeah. Low off stick. Mm -hmm. Wilkerson's 20th of the year. Second point of the night. 3-2. Gilman back in front. I don't know exactly. I'm going to go ahead and just call that an extra man goal. It was right at the expiration. Clearly, they were still taking advantage of it being unsettled, to say the least. So I'm going to make the uh, unilateral decision, executive decision. I have that type of power around here. I'm saying that was an extra man goal. And if you disagree with me, you're wrong. <laughs> Not about a four-second difference between shot clock and game clock now. So you'd think that Gilman, with the 3-2 advantage, will probably try to hold this at least for a little while. And, of course, they'll do the exact opposite because I'm going to be wrong all night. And it will not be wow. saved in, nice. giving chase. Badly can't get to it. I mean, even if he picked that ball up, Robbie Hopper was ready to eat all, his lunch. Yes. Glad to say the same thing for Spalding here. Right. We're killing it with 40 seconds left, ball in the back of the net. So wh when do you want to engage in a situation like this? Walk me through it. What are you drawing up here? What have you been practicing? Ooh, uh, maybe holding on to the Start, ball yeah, first. Yeah, taking care of the ball. I think I like settling in here. I like getting, every, you know, they're obviously doing an exchange here, getting the right personnel on, getting into their set. Maybe around 12 okay. is when I would initiate. That way if you have a shot and you miss, you have an opportunity to come back in with inbound play and maybe get another, another look at it. They're working something. Newell sends it back behind. Eight seconds all the way in front. Not able to dunk it home. Pokeness. They actually, I think, called a crease violation. And so it doesn't matter. That's how the quarter is going to come to a close. Gilman leads 3-2 after 12 minutes here at Whittles Field. Tonight's a bit of a special night for Archbishop Spalding Lacrosse, celebrating the 40th anniversary of the 1983 championship team. Sean, tell me a little bit about this group. So these guys are really kind of one of the stones in the wall has become Spalding Lacrosse, right? They were pivotal, pi pivotal to the growth of the game at uh, Spalding. Um, Fifteen of them went on to play lacrosse in college after Spalding. Two of them actually played at the University of Maryland. Um, there were some, some coaches. Um, two of them played D1 and D3 na in national championship games. Two played professional indoor lacrosse. Two of them are members of the Spalding Hall of Fame. I mean, it's a very talented group of guys. Um, even, you know, Coach Toomey for Loyola mm -hmm. was a Spalding grad um, and was on that team. Um, now, you know, he's he's been coaching at, yeah, at oh, he's the Loyola done for, with national for a long, championships. Yeah, yeah. long time. Um, and then, obviously, we have the coach of the 83 team, Bert Olson. Um, and he played played at Maryland. And uh, he actually won for the Spalding Lacrosse Alumni Association our first year award, uh, the Cavalier Award, who is given to someone who has exemplified spot in the cross, which is what Bert Olson has done. Awesome. So it's been it's been great to see these guys today. We had a little tailgate beforehand, got to talk to them, see them. They're excited to see these guys play and kind of see the generation that is benefiting from all their hard work and kind of helping build that program and set it off on the right trajectory. A Andrew, could you tell me a little bit about that? Obviously, when you and, and Sean played, did you feel that you had the obligation to live up to the standard that had been set by the guys from the 83 team? Yeah, I mean, like Sean said, I, it, those guys set the bar, right? And anytime you can have a championship team, they're doing something right. So year after year, you're kind of building on that. Uh, even the guys last year that graduated here, the, it, everybody on the roster right now, they're looking back at the team last year and said, those guys did a lot for this program. Yep. That lineage goes all the way back to, you know, the 83 team and even before that, um, trying to build a tradition here at Spalding. And, you know, I think what's great about Spalding is that they're always looking ahead, right? Always setting that bar a little bit higher every single year and, you know, making sure that they're they're doing the right things and, you know, winning and putting good, you know, product out on the field, but doing it the right way. And talking with the guys today, I think, you know, it says more about them as people than it does lacrosse players. Um, but they obviously have the, that championship ring, which is great. Well, we will bring it to you at halftime as that group, the 1983 championship team, will be recognized here on the field. Second quarter is underway. Gilman in front, 3-2, to two, and they'll begin with the balls. The team switch sides. Greyhounds moving left to right on your internet dial here in the second quarter. Glenn Clark, Sean Hatley, Andrew Scally with you for Archbishop Spalding Lacrosse. Looks like they might have had him trapped at the midline. Good move. What jumped out at you most in that first quarter, Sean? 
I think it was the confidence with which the offense is playing. Uh, they were moving the ball. They were, and when you have that confidence, you can get creative. Um, you're not just playing so robotic. Yeah, that wasn't robotic either. Good move from Oscar Wollison. And takes it all the way in for his first goal of the game. Gilman's got the first multi-goal advantage of the night at 4-2. Nobody picked him up. Made one move. No slide came. He just took it right in on goal for his 15th of the season. Good finish. So a quick goal. Much like we saw them get out to a quick start in the first quarter. And they get out to a quick starter here in the second. Good job. Not only getting that ground ball, but Phil does well to find some space with which to operate. That was a dangerous pass, but he gets bailed out. That is a not a great sequence. Not a great sequence. That's all I can say. <laughs> no, we're definitely seeing a lot of pressure on, on the ride. Gimlin's doing a great job. They're dropping a, an attack man down to the goalie, stringing, you know, which means you're running, you're sending one guy back and forth to kind of chase the ball and make them make that cross field pass. And Swan's definitely feeling the pressure. And unfortunately, they've turned it over a couple times on the clear. And it was like I was saying earlier, they're forcing you to beat them one on one with their matchups, right? They're going to force your defenseman to run it by them, and or they're going to force your midfielder to beat them from the top. Getting for, oh, nice oh, save by Newman. Save. Robbie Hopper doing the dirty work to keep that ball on the turf. But no ground ball to be had. Need to be a first-time scooper. And Gilman is going to take the timeout to protect the possession with 10-21 remaining in the second quarter. So if they're going to bring that type of pressure on the clears, what do you do? Well, it starts with bringing a midfielder back. So traditionally, you know, when you make a save or there's a turnover, you're dropping your middies, you're sending – defensive midi to the box to get that offensive personnel on the field to try and give yourself more of an advantage uh, like with the shot out, clock being you know higher early on in, in the day. possession have those offensive Four guys be able to make plays so I think it first starts with telling those defensive midis hey we're not beelining it for the for the midfield line to the, the, the subbing box we're you know slumping down a little bit being a, an outlet for the goalie the long poles whoever picks that ball up off the uh, off the turf and then giving it a couple seconds, and then at that point, once you settle in, you get your spacing right, then you can go to the box, get that offensive midi on. But you can't send two middies over the midfield line from the jump. you got to bring that support back and, and catch the ball running through the pass, turn your shoulders, and then, you know, a lot of times you got to do it with your legs, right? you got to beat one yep. guy. you got to make an, all, you know, an athletic play to get by the, the ride. Um, but it's going to take, again, most importantly, getting back and, and supporting the ball on the defensive side. And that, it and that, feels too, Sean, like they've been welcoming in like an extra defender by trying to operate along the sideline too, right? Yep, like, yep. Like, well, no, I, was, I mean, I agree with, agree with Andrew wholeheartedly on that. I mean, sometimes you do just have to make a play with your legs. And, you know, if the attackman's on you and you don't have anyone open, be an athlete. Yep, Run just by him. And, I mean, Robbie, Logan, Paul La Rochelle, or uh, uh, La Rochelle, I mean, they're going to, they're going to beat their man. Might take on a little contact. It's okay. Chicks dig scars. Certainly do. Possession for the Greyhounds out of the timeout. It's on the turf, oh, loose. There's there's something about the attackmen like Andrew that they just they they just wail on you. <laughs> they just see it's, it's like they don't know how to they play defense, swinging. so they just hack away. Oh, unsettled. Oh. That's brutal. Bo Webster able to take advantage. It's just the unfortunate part about lacrosse, right? You're trying to do everything right, trying to come away with the ground ball, but if you don't get it, all of a sudden, yep. the numbers are not in your favor. And you come out of a timeout right there, and, and you do exactly what you want to do, right? You put the ball on the turf and give yourself an opportunity to pick it up and, and you know, get off the field defensively. And, they, you know, nice ground ball by Gilman. Capitalized. I think the key here for Spalding is get a possession, slow it down, get your feet back under you because the, the last thing they want to do is let Gilman go on a two-goal, three-goal run right mm -hmm. here, and then you're you're putting yourself in a hole that's going to be really difficult to get out of. That's probably worth pointing out, Gilman has scored the last four Oops. goals in this game. I got the push here, right? Yep. And so we'll head back the other way. Would have been another face-off win for the Greyhounds. So it's 5-2 Gilman. Bo Webster, the future Holy Cross Crusader, picks up his first goal of the game now some trouble we're gonna double in the ball and able to find Wilbur Wilbur doesn't force the issue 
Yeah, played right into what Sean was saying here. A possession is huge. Just get the confidence, you know, back in the offensive side. Running oh, shot oh, or far. Jeez. I that looked to him here like it yeah, hit that, I think that ball's going at the at the speed of light. Whew. I didn't even see that thing until it hit the post. Man, from up here that looked like a goal. It Good was hard not, take by Yeah, Newell. You love to see that from Jack Newell. I think that was the hardest dodge I've seen. Jack Newell do this season. He went hard to the cage, turned, and took a good shot. Yeah, they're definitely dodging aggressively, which is good to see. Garza trying it's to get the screen from Duffy. Here. Still 37 seconds remaining on the possession clock. Got the switch. <sighs> Trouble there. Good job by Newell to hang on to it as he was getting beat down. Finds Wilbur. Yeah, Gilman's playing extremely aggressive defense, which if Spalding can keep their composure, they can exploit that. Because yep. they're, they're not afraid to double the ball, so it's leaving them open. If they move the ball quickly, they should be able to capitalize. Garza flips it back towards the middle, step mm. down, but right into the stick of Zachary Parks. Alec Howard not able to convert. I mean, that's a great offensive possession. Took a lot off the shot clock. Obviously had the early shot off the pipe to get the reset um, early in possession. And that's exactly, I mean, that's the shot you're looking for right there. Alec Howard, one of your best shooters, you know, from distance with a step down, no one on his hands. Unfortunately, you know, went high to high and the goalie saw it the entire way, but you got to be happy offensively. And multiple good shots on that possession. Unfortunately, just not a goal. But they do give the defense a chance hard. to breathe for a second. And hard dodges. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, we've been looking for that all season and it's good to see them the last couple games. Guys are going hard. Checked out. Ground ball picked up. Great job by Meehan to get it on the turf. And then Hopper there to pick up the ground ball. Good double. Nice defensive play. Yeah, Hopper had two guys eyeing him up as he was crossing over the midfield line. Because <laughs> they, know, they, yep. know, they know he wants to go to the cage. Instead, Cavaliers will slow it down. Second midfield out there again. Gordy Bennett. Slides it back to the middle and Wolf. Wolf trying to feed it in front. It's knocked down. Could be in and out there. There we go. There you go. Nice call. So. Put some stripes on you, Andrew. Right. He saw that from all the way up here. Right now, Eagle eye. This is this guy. So a new 80 to work with for Spalding. commercial for LASIK. <laughs> Wolf sends it back behind. Cavaliers need a goal. It's been since about the midway point of the first quarter since they've gotten on the board. Need to get things going again. Bennett dodging right. Probably a little bit too much mustard on that pass. It was deflected, so it stays down here as Barnhill got his stick on it. Jackson Barnhill, future Franklin and Marshall diplomat. That was not quite as good of a pass. And Glenn, I know we've been saying confidence has kind of been the word, but I think now it's, at this point in the season, it's consistency, right? There's flashes of good things, but it's they're not doing it consistently, right? You sure. just pointed out the fact they're on a, they're on a zero <sighs> goal. Yeah, Leads I mean, to a pole goal. It's Barnhill. Fifth straight I mean, for the Greyhounds. Pole, pole goals, like I said, the most electric goal in the game. Yep. Just... You know, not when the other team does it. No, no, that's not great. <laughs> They're fired up about it. There's no doubt about it. And they left him out there for a while, did not feel the need to race him off the field as they were still. It seemed like the early breakout was closed off, and it seemed like there was an opportunity there for Spalding to get settled back in defensively. They just never did. 6-2, 5-0 run for Gilman. Past the midway point of the second quarter, Cavaliers desperately need... A possession, desperately need a goal. You can't come over the restraining line. There we go. Got a late flag, though. So that. Dead ball. Newell had definitely come over the restraining line trying to get after that ball, but will get bailed out. So an opportunity for the first time tonight for the Cavaliers to go on the extra man. The 60-second penalty on Ian Wolfie Evans. Pretty timely penalty for the Spalding offense here. It would be great to stop the bleeding. 
and, and put one in the back of the net here. And we've seen this a couple times this season, guys, where they'll look kind of like they're meandering through quarters, and then they'll get a late goal, and they can put a couple of, of goals together and sort of change momentum. There's oh, great oh, yes. Yes. in front. And there's their extra man specialist, P.J. Pokeness. That's great. Fifth extra man goal of the season. What do you think of that, Andrew? He didn't waste any time. He didn't. I, I mean, 15 seconds off the penalty. Saw a little bit, you know, it's a little different look than what we're used to seeing offensively. They, they initiated from behind where, you know, the first 10 games of the season, a lot of that offense was initiated from up top and, and kind of that open look. Um, we're going to try on a rotation, but there, got the ball behind and, and make the defense turn their heads. And when they turn their heads to look at X, it allows someone to cut right off their back. And, and that's exactly what PJ did there and buried one. So, like I said, pretty timely penalty, and, and they capitalized. Pokeness' first goal of the game, and two opportunities at a ground ball, and neither one of them are able to be scooped up. So the Greyhounds get it back. Pokeness' is 16th of the year, 17th point. Komen's with the assault Good flags oh, coming out. I, Up high, I think. I Speak your mind. Yeah. I don't agree with that. <laughs> Logan came up. I mean, it wasn't politely, like he crossed him. Very politely did not yeah. agree with it. You guys, I mean, luckily I caught myself before I said what I really wanted to say. But One minute full time on Sonic. Which was poppycock. Yeah, I, that was. That's what he was going to say. I mean, well, nowadays, and I get it, right? They're trying to protect the head, and the refs are trained anything up near the head. You, you err on the side of caution and call it. So I, I, I get it. But at the same time, you know, he's wasn't really that much of a dangerous play. I think it looked guys, worse than yeah, what it was. Yeah. I think, you know, long pole and long pole, you heard a lot of, lot more than, than what actually happened. So either way, they threw it, and they're on the man down here. Second man-up opportunity of the game for the Greyhounds, who were able to convert the first time, just as the penalty was expiring from well outside. Whew, Wilkerson really generated yeah. some power on that shot. Low to high, it's backed up, stays with Gilman. It's like an Andrew Scally three-wood. Is that what it looks like? That yep. one went a little too straight for that. <laughs> ah, good point. <laughs> Check the parking lot for mine. <laughs> Down to 20 seconds on the penalty. And it's back on the turf. Push. Yep. 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 I, I might need to. I might get some stripes. Boy. I might be out of the I booth know. after halftime. I'm, I, I'm yeah, seeing. I think, the, I, have I'm seeing well. I think I have some flags from when I from my ref. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring them in. You can throw them out the you window. You know, it was remarkable with that one too. I feel like he was calling that even before the push occurred. I, I saw like he he just knew. He sensed I, that the push was coming. Seven seconds left to kill off the penalty. Cavaliers will be happy to hold it. And we are back to even strength with four minutes to play in the second quarter. That was a good man down stop by Spalding. They needed that one. Yeah, and something that's going to go unnoticed, Coach Phipps right there on, on the uh, clear, yelling at Robbie Hopper to stay back, knowing that they were man down. Traditionally, Hopper would have gone over there and kind of pushed the offense, you know, and helped in that transition game, but called him back just in time, managed to stay on side to then lead to that, unfortunately. But Yeah, that's well, not a deflection. That's just a turnover. one of those things with, you know, Andrew, both you and I were on the sideline with Coach Phipps at, at one point or another, and that guy just sees the whole field at all times uh, and understands the situation um, better than, you know, majority of the guys on the field. I, I feel like sometimes we talk about goalies that way, and we talk about how they see the whole field, and yeah. it's sort of like, yeah, but they only do one thing. I'm like, let's, you know, <laughs> let's not. But that is big for that sense that he's been doing it for his entire career. He's been seeing the entire yep. field. And it's just amazing. He knows kind of right before it happens, you know, where guys are going to be. And sometimes it's amazing to see it. And Wright sends it back behind. 6-3, Greyhounds in front with three minutes to play in the first half. Good save. Nice save by Newman, and he's able Ooh, to hold he on to it. He still has it. I'm okay with that, though. Run it out. Certainly don't force a pass. Yeah, Andrew, it looks like Gilman is just not afraid to go to the cage early. Like, it's not like they're really trying to work the shot clock down or anything. They're just kind of going right away almost. Yeah, I think we saw it from the very first whistle. I mean, they were trying to push tempo and, and be aggressive, and that's been their game plan, and they've, they've stuck to it, which is, you know, good and bad, right? I mean, you would think you'd see an adjustment, but, you know, scoreboard doesn't lie, right? Six to three, they're seeing, they're seeing good opportunities, and they're taking them. Spalding takes their first timeout with two minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first half. 
Glenn Clark, Sean Hatley, Andrew Scally with you. Uh, Sean, I'll start with you. It, it does feel like this is kind of a critical, like the timeout was taken at the right time because it feels like there's a huge potential swing here over the course of the next two minutes and 42 seconds. I think this was a, an appropriate time to settle in and say, hey, after that last turnover, this is a pretty critical possession. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think if Spalding can get one here, I think it, it changes the momentum a little bit of this whole game. Even though they're still down by two, I mean, if they can get one here going into halftime, six to four, that is a great place to be going into that second half. Well, it gives you a chance to get the ball back, maybe get another one, who knows, before the half is over. Whereas if you don't convert, this thing gets out to like a four-goal game. Andrew, there's, I don't know, there's something mentally about what the score is at the half that really seems to, to weigh on you and impact you as a player. It does, and I think the worst thing that, that happens is offensively you get in the mindset of, I need to force it, right? I need to score the next goal and thinking it's going to be a four-point you you know four point goal, and there's no such thing, right? So go and play by play and just getting this next one, connect the next pass, you know, make the next catch, get the ground ball, put the next one in the back of the net. You know, you just got to focus on those little plays, and they, they add up. Gilman goes to his zone. Is it the first time we've seen them in the zone today? It is, yeah, and I, I'm seeing Coach Ford yelling out some uh, some play calls here. Gordy Bennett shoots wide. Back Take up that is there. A little 12-yard shot, but looks like they're trying to get the ball behind and initiate and get in that kind of triangle rotation that they we typically see on the, on the man up. 40 seconds still on the possession clock. The thought of going to his own here is just show him a different look as now they're coming out of it and going back. Well, I thought they were. They take, take that back. They settle back in. Good moving. Garza Good kicked save. the side. Great save. Goalie's going to feel that one in the morning. Parks comes up with it. Backup is there. Is is that the idea for Tony and Contra and his staff just to say, hey, let's throw him something else out of him out, out of the timeout that they're not prepared for, whatever they drew up? Yeah, I, th I think that's exactly right. I mean, they've been in man to man for the first, you know, essentially the whole first half. And there's no. a great <laughs> shot. Let's go, Jack. Let's that 15 yards that out. Just about 15 let's yards, go, Jack. And they didn't pick him up. And he sort of said, all right, let's go. Makes that it six four. That's what Coach Fitz wants to see from Jack Newell is the way he's playing today. He's playing hard. He's playing confident. He's, you can kind of see him when he's out there. He's pointing people around. He's becoming a leader, and that's what they wanted. That's what they wanted from him, and it's good to see Jack kind of stepping into that role. Second goal of the game for Jack Newell is 15th of the season, and it's a two-goal game with 141 remaining in the first half. So a huge opportunity now here if you can win this faceoff, and Criswell does just that. They got off to a bit of a slow start at the dot in this game, but Criswell's done well to even that out a little bit more as the half has gone on. Now you got to make sure you get the clear. And yep, nine to clear it. Got to get it up. A little bit of trouble. Dangerous pass. Good snag by Bennett. Oh, he's in trouble. They still have a timeout left. Bennett loses the ball. And numbers the other way. Good nice save. 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 Newman comes up with a. I think huge that was a stop. unanimous. Yeah. Nice save from all. <laughs> it's not just. It's hard it's to not, argue. <laughs> I, sometimes the quality of the save is matched by the moment yes. with the save, yep. right? That yep. this was a spot where it was down to, everything else is broken down. You're going to have to be the one to bail us out. Step up. That's exactly what occurred. That's one of those when this when this quarter ends, you go up to your goalie and you say thank yeah, you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bail out. It's like I owe you, I owe you one. Turned aside the shot from Badly. We go under 50 seconds to play in the half. Only a Badly? Yeah, that was the pun that you missed earlier oh. when I said, did the defense play that badly? Uh, it's, a, it's all right. Yeah, Tom. It's all right. It's yeah. good to be back you together. you got to simplify things for Sean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what does he know? What kind of education does he have? <laughs> Spalding. That's, that's, I, that's oh, all yeah, that I better be careful. It's that's what, all that matters. Uh, yeah, right. That's what drives my coworkers nuts. Goes in one ear and out, out the other. <laughs> oh, what you were talking? <laughs> Badly from back at X sends it up top. Twelve seconds remaining on the possession clock. And I think another one. Another is, there, one. is there any chance that the fans here at Whittles Field managed to force that shot by chanting earlier? Started that clock Good running. Check. That'll be how the half comes to a close. Glenn, you're going into halftime, 6-4. You got to like that. That's what we you talked about. Like that. That's why the timeout was so good, because it changed momentum a bit. 
We are going to turn things over to our public address announcer here at the half as we celebrate the 40th anniversary of the 1983 championship team. Kelly told me to ask you. All right. Do you want, do you want me to go? I, 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 don't, I have no idea. He told me to ask. You won't believe this. I'm actually Sean's attorney. <laughs> you can't sue me. I sue you. <laughs> Two huge stakes. Huge stakes. It's water was in his own. Oh, I didn't even catch that. Took it right out of, right out of Gimlin's book. At this, At this time, time, we would like, would to, like to, we would we ask, would you, ask that you to turn your turn attention your to the field. This year, we are celebrating the 40th anniversary of Spalding's first men's lacrosse varsity championship team. In 1983, the men's lacrosse program won the MSA B conference title. On the field to welcome the attending members of that 1983 champion, championship team, our director of alumni engagement, Jeff Parsons, athletic, athletic director, John Mellinger, Steve Kelly, Jr., the president of Spalding Lacrosse Alumni Association and board members of the SLAA. Please join us in wel welcoming some of the members of that championship team onto the field. Patty Drasher Alonghi. Patty was a team manager and graduated in 1983. Bill Barnett. Bill was a team captain and another 1983 graduate. Bert Olson. Bert was a PE teacher at Spalding and head lacrosse coach. Kevin McDonald, a 1984 graduate. Robert Rootmiller, class of 1983. Skip Steffens, class of 1984. Bill Wagner, class of 1983. Ron Wheat, team captain and class of 1983, and Keith Vogel, class of 1985. As these team members join each other for a picture, let's give them a round of applause in celebration of the 1983 championship team.
Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Ever since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and then transitions directly onto the field. Where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant. I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. As you walk these halls, you'll find innovation, charity, adventure, creativity, endurance, guidance. And if you let them, these holes will take you anywhere. Hallmarks of a Spalding athlete. Are they able to compete at the highest level possible? Spalding is positioned very uniquely because they are in one of the best leagues in the state. When they're competing at a high level, that's big time. It was always known as a great academic school, but we wanted to build a full rounded school for student athletes. And we knew that they could get to where they're at today. Ever since I've graduated from high school, I've watched the campus grow astronomically. Spalding, it laid a foundation for my understanding of teamwork, friendship, and things that were so much bigger than what happened on the basketball court. They were challenging themselves academically and spiritually, and then transitions directly onto the field where that consistency molds and shapes everybody that's involved. The future of Spalding athletically is strong and vibrant, and I'm excited for our Cavs. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Getting ready for the start of the second half here at Whittles Field. Glenn Clark alongside Sean Hatley, Andrew Scally. Andrew, it was a 6-2 game, and while Spalding still trails 6-4, it did feel like they were able to get a bit of momentum back there late in the second quarter. Yeah, we talked about it with about two minutes left and, and the importance of having that possession you know, end in, in a goal and having the opportunity to potentially get the ball back and do it again. They didn't get the ball back, but the momentum – was built on the offensive side, transitioned down to the defensive side, two huge stops there at the end that could have been backbreakers. Um, 
but fortunately made the save and, and like you said, got to the half at 6-4, and I feel like the momentum is on the Cavalier side right now, so yeah. we'll see how they start the second half. A couple of huge saves there from Newman, Sean. I mean, absolute game-changing types of saves. Jacob Newman bailed his teammates out there, right? And that's like, just like I said at the end of half. I'm yep. sure they walked over to him and said, thank you, sir. So <laughs> now what do they still need to do better here in the second half in order to be able to get over the hump? So I think the big thing here is they have to get back in transition because Gilman has shown that they're willing to push the ball and they're willing to be aggressive on, on both sides of the ball. So what Spalding has to do, the defense has to be communicating. They have to get some early slides, but they also have to have the two slide, right? Sometimes you can get away with just sliding and kind of showing, but they have to get that two slide because – Gilman's been moving the ball quickly and getting aggressive with those passes. That looked like a push from here. Got it. So. It I don't know. Let's go to our uh, yes. Dean Blandino. <laughs> right. uh, Dean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rep in the booth. Spot on, Glenn. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. It's starting to rub off. So, chance to make this a one-goal game here to start the second half. Cavaliers coming left to right on your internet dial here in quarter number three. Garza swings it out. Wilbur trying to dig in. And we have seen all throughout the course of this game, Gilman extend the defense. Wilbur makes a nice move. Shake free, but doesn't try to force anything. Good ball movement here. Everybody getting a touch. Duffy up top. Runs into some trouble. Has it checked out of his stick. Duffy not able to get it back. Off blue. Yeah. Might have a reset here. It's out off of Guyton, George Guyton, the junior defender. Good way to fight to get that back. They said no possession there, so they'll maintain the 42 seconds on the shot clock. Duffy's got to make a decision there. I mean, the ball was moving. It kind of died in a stick there, but looking to make a play and, and moving hard, but uh, got to keep everybody involved. Guyton, a very highly regarded defender. He is headed to play at Notre Dame. I hear they're good. Ward. I mean, Andrew, how important is it when you're playing at this level to have a sense of kind of controlled urgency when you have the ball? I think it's super important. Unfortunately, you know, as Glenn mentioned, you know, you have a future Notre Dame long pole breathing down your neck and <laughs> yeah. swinging a six-foot stick at you. Another great save from Newman as he denies Wasson this time. Makes some of that decision-making tough. Uh, yeah. So. Newman coming up huge right now for the Cavaliers. Can they turn it into some goals? Trying to play the sub game here a little bit with Ben Ruiz, keeping him on the field a little bit, but a left to take him off here. Bennett. That swung back. And they'll go to work, looking for the first goal of the second half, trying to pick up where they left off back in the second quarter. Strowski feeds it. Howard gets free, running shot wide. It's from well outside. He yeah. certainly got a good swing on that one. Polk just almost found himself above the goal line. Luckily, he was there for that backup. Back up top, Wolf. Second midfield unit. They go under 30 seconds on the possession clock. Newell. Oh, I thought Jack was going to do that step down. It was a tough angle from there. 16 seconds. Strowski back up top. Got to go to here, Bennett. Ten. Running hard. Two defenders greet him. Holds on to it. Tries mm. to pass it through. Either push. way. Give him the push. Instead, it's going to be a shot clock violation. And we'll go back the other way. So for the first time tonight, Andrew Scally misses on a call. Looking for the push. Doesn't get it. Yeah. Well, not everyone can be his level. Oh, good check. That. Robbie Hopper. Whew, at the very last second. Desperation check works. But, yeah, I think they got away with one with a, on a push down here. I'm, I'm kind of siding on, you know, thinking back on it. Low shot clock, it would have been a bailout, right? Mm -hmm. You would have had Gilman up in arms if they, they, if they called that. Give him a new 60. Yep, the reset, another possession. You know, in a 6-4 game, a ticky-tack call like that is, you know, Best not called, so. Kutalko. Next midfield unit out for the Greyhounds, and they score the first goal of the second half to make it 7-4. The sophomore showing off a really impressive shot. Whipping it across his body. First of the game. Yeah, another one of those goals that kind of felt uneventful. 
right? It, it was a slow developing play, deep shot, maybe 12, 13 yards. One I think that Jacob definitely wants back. Different look at the dot. Joseph Kim out there for Gilman. And he's called for the violation first, the second half for the Greyhounds. Your face, Sean Hatley, made it seem like maybe you thought that was one that Newman could have had. I think he, I mean, just like Andrew said, I think he wanted that back. You could see him. He he tracked it. He was there, and it was almost like he looked down at his stick like, why is it not in mm -hmm. there? Um, and that's just it's just one you, one you want to have. I mean, I think Gilman was a little surprised it ended up going in. Nice look. Oh, wow, what a save. Garza was right in front. Quick and it sticked it right into his face mask. It's a different goalie out there to start the second half for Gilman as well. It's Bryce Churgott, the yeah. junior. Loose ball push. Churgot comes with a huge save. The Cavaliers do indeed get it back. Four minutes gone by here in this third quarter. Again, this one thing that has just been problematic all season long, the Cavaliers, is long scoreless droughts. Good movement again, Good ball cutting movement. through, mm. but not able to get it on goal for Pokeness, and the backup isn't there. Needed P.J. to stick that. It's back-to-back -back really well-executed plays, but neither one of them results in a goal. Great ball movement. Just can't put it in the back of the net. First one saved, second one not on target. Clear completed. Now Spalding died up a little pressure on the on the ride. Nice check. Still yep. really working Great hard. Job. And no that's something one. we haven't really seen from Spalding as far as extending pressure. I mean, we've seen it sporadically, but consistently not so much. That's a dangerous uh, pass. Yeah, got to get that pass up. It was the right look, just can't throw it at his feet. Patience. Other way. Nice oh, check. yard nice check sale. Robbie. Playing without a stick. Yep. Robbie Hopper decides even a breezy Friday night is a good spot for a yard sale. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Andrew. I, Whatever they're selling, I'm buying. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the guy is just taking me to the cleaners right now. I mean, Robbie Hopper, uh, Robbie Hopper is like an octopus. With just, <laughs> it's like he has freaking just keeps coming at tentacles you. all over the place, right? You never know where his stick's going to drop. Um, and he's got great patience too, right? Everyone always wants to immediately throw the check once once they get get beat by a step. But Robbie, he waits because he knows they're going to have to pull the stick back. And, and he's connected on a lot of those. Yeah. Coming into the game with 18 calls turnovers, I mean, that he's got to be leading the league. Wow. Tough angle. My word. Wow. Gordy Bennett makes it a two-goal game again at 7-5. And Gordy showed up to the party. You gotta love to see that. I do not know how there was any angle here to make that work. Yeah, right off the pipe. Sort of right inside the right calf of Gilman goalie Bryce Churgott. And let's see if that gets gets Gordy's confidence going and see if we can get a little more a little more production out of here this game. First goal. Second point of the game for Bennett. And another. There he is, Robbie Hopper. So. Well yep. placed check. Will Cook steps through, picks up the ground ball. Boy, Robbie Hopper, I said it before this season, but he has been very much this team MVP all season long. He has been everything you could possibly ask for. And a player that, as we have to keep reminding ourselves, is only a sophomore. Was a flag down? A flag was down. I saw a full-time signal from the mm. official. I don't know if something was said on the sideline or what happened there, but. Down full -time serve. Wow. It's Will Cook who's put up on the board for it. I didn't see it either. Yeah, something must be said there, you know, in the, in the substitution game. But either way, one minute full-time. If they can kill it here. Uh, that'd be a big stop and again a momentum builder for them as they cut the lead to two. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You want to see guys keep their composure. I mean, I know emotions are high, but 
in a two-point game. Great check by Robbie. Daring play. And a great ground ball. Daring, I mean, <laughs> come on. Daring come on. Play. Hopper pushing it. And is he going to Is he shoot. gonna do it? Oh, oh he had it too, he didn't it. he? Now, the only bad news about that is there's still 30 seconds on the penalty. Yeah. And your call turnover machine has to run 90 yards the other yeah, way. Yeah, and it leads to a transition opportunity Very the other good way. Good save. Boy, are they fortunate Gotta there. Get back in. Still subbing. Yeah, very much still unsettled. Meehan does really well there to slow down Webster. Nolan finally is able to fly in. Matched up. Great, great save. Got to get the another save, mm. but a loose change is waiting there for mm. Webster, and he puts it that home. Is. Just two seconds remaining on the penalty. That's those rebounds. A bunch of stuff there, right? <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, that, that's... That was unfortunate. It went from potentially being, you know, an eruption on the sideline over there for Spalding with the long pole goal and, and Hopper after making a great call to turn with play down the defensive side to then making a great save to then giving up a rebound and, and putting it back in the net for Gilman. So kind of messing with my emotions up here a little I, I, bit. I, I feel like we have to be fair. For as much praise as we give Robbie Hopper, and we certainly understand in almost any other situation in the game, if you're not picked up, sure, go ahead, take that shot. But with 30 seconds still remaining on the penalty, it feels like there's – that can't happen. You have to be have your head a little bit more there to say, no, yep. we've got to kill off the rest of this penalty. And honestly, I mean, I know it's relatively early in the second half here, but with a couple timeouts, you know, in the holster, Maybe. as a coach, I'm, I'm thinking about pulling one there because I think it does two things. One, it maintains possession, which we know is the most important thing, on, you know, in this game. But two, it's, a, it's an opportunity to bring your team in as a group mm -hmm. after a huge save. You know, down on the defense side, being man down to get them fired up and, and, and kind of crowds get, into and get every, it. Yeah, yeah. It just kind of capitalize on that excitement. Nice spin by Great Garza. By Can't Garza. get the shot on goal. Eight five instead. Webster second of the game. Tell you what, Garza's got a cannon. But does he ever? Cavaliers again down by three. Duffy's, get, Duffy's been a little quiet today. I think he's due. I hope. Duffy running. Let it rip. Yeah. That one's high. Backed up. Stays with the Cavaliers. Lots of time. 56 on the possession clock. I think they like the matchup here with Duffy. You know, shorty on shorty. And as he runs right to the crease there, off ball, which is <laughs> tough to see. But see if they can get it back. Another opportunity for us to remind, this is a young team. But some of these mistakes just kind of critical, you know? Some of them are experience mistakes, right? Yep. Just just not having been in that situation before. I mean, running through the crease right there is not really an excuse. I wish I enjoyed anything in life as much as Robbie Hopper enjoys trying to get the ball out of someone's stick. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I like it's sitting like a, out back. Like a Labrador retriever with his rubber ball. <laughs> he just keeps going right back yeah. for it. Credit to Garza that time. An offensive player coming back in and getting the job done defensively. Got to clear it here. Nice pass. Philly waiting for it along the sideline. Cavaliers will get the opportunity to set up offensively with three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Did a lot of work to get back into this one, but it's a three-goal game again late in the quarter after a second extra man goal on the night from the Greyhounds. Ostrowski! Yes, nice there we shot. Go. Great what shot. What a rip! Off the face mask of the goalie. I mean, he, he puts some... Put some pepper on that one. First of the game for Ethan Ostrowski. That looks like a eight little six. Looks like a little Andrew Scally ready rocket. Watch this one more time. And a great screen yeah, in there right off, from right off the neck of the neck of the stick. That's just a tough shot. I mean, near side. Granted, the goalie is right-handed, so he had to go across his body to make a save there. But little angle and, and not much goal to work with. By the way, guys, sorry, I got really excited on that goal. I you did. Like I, I feel like I, I yelled a little bit into the mic. It. So for all of you viewers at home, I'm sorry if I <laughs> broke your TV stereo. <laughs> it was worth it. Newell had the screen. Now Ostrowski, that goal, the seventh of the season, cuts it back to a two-goal game. But the Greyhounds followed up with a quick face-off win. 
And now they'll get their personnel out there, get those two long poles off the field. Spalding has had answers, but they haven't been able to completely get over the we hump. Got, we got Ben Rue. Ben Ruiz. Nice save. Got an outlet if he wants it. Newman doesn't see it or doesn't choose to take it. But Newman has been exceptional tonight. I think we can keep saying that. He has made a lot of really high-level yep. saves. They're in trouble, though. And it leads to a turnover. Failed clear. Morelli picks it up, pushes it ahead, unsettled, and that's too easy. Maloney scores his first of the game, makes it 9-6 with 1.52 remaining in the third quarter. Sean defensively, I mean, great stop, right? Did what you're supposed to do, goal and makes a save. What does a fail clear like that do for you mentally after, you know, offensively you're seeing, you know, the other side of the ball, you know, cut the lead and, and things are going in, in your direction? I mean, frankly, you're you're pissed, right? Because you work so hard to get your offense the ball, and then when something like that happens, you're like, guys, just do us a favor and take care of the ball, right? Just give us a breather because now, look, the ball's coming right back down, and Gilman's offense has been moving quickly. They've been dodging hard, and that, I mean, we're now almost towards the end of the – of the third quarter, I mean, you're you're beat. You know, no matter how many sprints you do in practice or how in shape you are, I mean, you're going 100 miles a minute. If it was, I, knowing how disheartening it was up here in the booth, I can only imagine how disheartening it was for the guys on the field. 90 seconds to play in the third quarter. Got to dig in, get a stop, try to get yourself one more chance here before the end of the quarter to cut it back to a two-goal game. Greyhounds, certainly no need to be in a rush. Outside That's off the side of the net. Parent goal is Maloney. Not able to get it on target. See right there, you see two defensive players for Spalding sub into the box, which makes it tough because right that eliminates two options for the goalie to get the ball up, but fortunately it works out in their favor here. Cavaliers aren't going to push it. Ben yeah, like it almost, almost helped them there because they had that extra guy right. coming out of the box. 50 seconds remaining. We saw a late quarter situation. At the end of the second, they weren't able to convert. And Gilman still extending the defense. It's interesting that they have a shorty really extending and playing hard on ball like that. And that way too, way too much mustard on that pass. And I will say it, that was the second lackadaisical pass from Gordy Bennett. Right, you can't you can't have that at this point in the game when you're down by three and your guys are busting their butt on defense. Right, take care of the ball. Chris passes, not slinging at sidearm. Look, and I, I can't, I can't. Uh, you can probably tell or yeah, hear fr the frustration, frustration in my voice yep. because it's just that's the kind of stuff that at this point in the season you can't have if you want to win at this level. Five seconds remaining. The Greyhounds get a shot off. No, they won't. Just good stop there. Good job to hang in there and run the rest of the clock off as Wilkerson can't get it off his stick. After three quarters, Gilman in front, 9-6. Glenn Clark, Sean Hatley, Andrew Scally with you from Whittles Field. Guys, at halftime, we did honor the 1983 men's lacrosse championship team the 40th anniversary celebration and sean i was hoping that maybe you could tell us a little bit more about some of the guys who are part of that team yeah so bird olson was the head coach he coached at spalding from 1980 to 1983 uh, he graduated from the university of maryland where he played in three national championships and he actually won the national championship in 1975 against navy while while at college park um, Jeff Bruce, who was the assistant coach, graduated Spalding in 19 or 19, sorry 1979, and was a coach on the '83 team. He attended the University of Maryland, played goalie for Coach Buddy Beardmore, who, you know, staple staple in the lacrosse community. Um, and then, at, you know, as we talked about before, Charlie Toomey was a two-time All-American at Loyola, um, started in goal in the 1990 NCAA championship game uh, versus Syracuse and he's currently as we all know in his 18th year as the head coach at Loyola um, and actually won the 2012 NCAA championship and was named coach of the year last year. Um, John Holthouse uh, after graduating from Spalding he attended Washington College and played in the national championship in 1986. Uh, he then 
transported to Loyola and played mid midfield under Coach Dave Cottle, who's Sean, whose son Sean yep. Cottle is on the sideline with with Coach Phipps. Um, a lot of a lot of intertwining, but we'll yeah, you, you can yeah, keep going. Go there's, ahead. We have uh, Ron Wheat, Bruce Ashby, Bill Barnett, Kevin McDonald, Garrett Tash, R.J. Holdhouse, Jack Holtgreff, Robert Root Miller, Skip Steffens, Michael Murray, and Keith Vogel. All the guys. Um, on that 1983 team that are either here and a couple guys aren't. But we want to thank them for all the hard work that they put in to kind of set the foundation for Spot on the Cross. Underway in the fourth quarter, important ground ball, but some trouble for Newman. Ooh, dangerous pass. Still a lot of work to do to get the clear after a tough ground ball from Dunn. Well, Got to go somewhere with it. You got six seconds. Newman's just going to have to lob it out towards midfield. He had a vision, but and wow. it pinned out. How in the world? <laughs> it's that spin. Come on. Wow. Yes. Oh. Let's go. Complete Let's go. momentum changer. Is that, is that Connor Wilbur? Wilbur <laughs> stays down there. with it in a desperate situation. Bounce just the right way off the turf. Wow. Able to go find it. And just takes it all the way in. And, and a couple push-ups, you know. Just Why not? Why not? Hey, it's just how they drew it up. I was going to say that Newman's back to, like, why are we acting surprised, guys? Right. Yeah. <laughs> guys, get down here and get, get 10 with me. <laughs> all the way. That Connor is Wilbur. something where normally we talk about the luck bouncing the other way. Mm -hmm. That was definitely in Spalding's favor there. First goal of the game, third of the season for Wilbur. Second point tonight. And what do we say? Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Much better. The the, wow. Official went to grab his flag, did not. And at least a transition opportunity. Come on. Stays down here. Jeez, Dean Blandino, you're really right? missing some of these calls. Gosh. Now. I'm trying to speak it into existence here. <laughs> you know what? We'll take it. They should call the play more often where <laughs> they just chuck the ball down the field and it Actually, turns into yeah, a goal. I think I saw one call. The refs pointed up at Andrew and were asking right. him yeah, what yeah. the call was. What was it? What did yeah. you see there? Gene Serator in the booth. <laughs> so, Two-goal game again, nine, nine zone. zone. Knocked Good down by Hopper. by Hopper. In trouble. Good job to hop through that by Philly. Newman's got to get rid of it. And again, this is a lot of trouble. Now Newman's got to race back to the goal and not going to get there in time. Disaster. All of the good, that early goal wiped away as Mike Maloney makes it 10-7. I tell you what, I mean, it, it's definitely on the scouting report that Gilman likes to pressure in their, in their riding situations, but it's hard to emulate, right? They're dropping down. You can't, they have athletes all over the field applying pressure. I mean, they have three guys below goal line extended there, pressing. I mean, it, it's suffocating, right? So as I mentioned earlier early in the game, you got to have those midfielders come back. I didn't see any midfielders below the 45-yard line. That's going to make it tough for any, you know, any defensive team to clear the ball. Um, so I'm looking for an adjustment here the rest of this game. Otherwise, you know, can't get away from them. Is there a point at which Newman himself has to be on the end? There was a push in there. I it, was I was always convinced that the offensive guys like Andrew were allergic to anywhere below. The right, box. I can't. I can't score yeah. from here. Uh, I mean, so why yeah, would I want to be uh, here? On the defensive yeah. half, if you have to go down below the straining line, it was almost like broke out in hives. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll ask the question: Is there a point at which it's on Newman to say, "I'll be the one to run it"? If if that's what I got to do, I know you don't want that to be the case, but you almost have to sometimes. I've seen in some situations where I'll actually put the ball in the back of the net, let a um, short stick midfielder come in the back of the net, scoop the ball, and run it out himself that way instead of putting okay. the ball in the goalie stick. And the reason you would do that is, I mean, the goalie has a, you know, a pretty deep pocket on his on his stick, and you know, for saving purposes. But it makes it tough to get the ball out in sure. tough situations, and you apply pressure to it. You know, it only compounds that. So, um, they've they've. I don't have the stats in front of me, but they're probably close to 50-50 on their clearing right now. Oof. So they've they've shown glimpse of being able to do it. It's just not consistent enough. And you know, in a three-goal game, nine minutes to play against a you know a top MIAA team. You got to be, you know, seventy-five percent, eighty percent, and above. Well, that's that word again, Andrew. Consistency, right? <laughs> and just haven't been showing that on really either end. Good luck. Pokeness. Great take. By Skip Pokeness. pass to PJ Pokeness. He hammers it home. His second of the game, and despite the struggles in the clear, despite some of these mental lapses, 
Spalding's still right there in a two-goal game. But it's it's been take a penny, leave a penny, right? right? You know, it's it's they, they they make a stop, and then they give it right back, make a stop, give it right back. So it's, I think, uh, I think if they can string a couple of good possessions together here and some good stops, um, we might find ourselves in a tied-up game with low time. Sec Wouldn't that be exciting? That would be Glenn? a lot of fun. <laughs> Second of the night. <laughs> now I demand it. Don't call that. But the ground ball does belong to Guyton. And the dot has not been kind to the Cavaliers in the second half either. 10-8 game, nine minutes to play. To your point, it seems like those... Oh, good move good from his line, but yep. Newman holds his own. Looked like Newell got caught ball watching a little bit there. Now they're dropping into the zone here, see if they can get another deflection and turnover. There have been two, at, in the second half alone, I know there have been two cheap goals given up after failed clears, and, and right now it's a two-goal game. Yeah, and Gilman went right into, it looked like the 1-4-1, one, one, uh, one, one, as soon as Spalding went into their zone. How do you like that, seconds. Andrew? I'm glad you can count. <laughs> <laughs> you're making progress, 10 games in the season. <laughs> it feels like you're giving him credit for something. Are you certain that he's right about it, though? <laughs> That's why I brought my abacus. Knocked down in front. <laughs> Good nice ground ball. ball. Picked up by Ruiz. Look, attackman stick. Yep, there we go. Attackman stick lands in the crease, which is a penalty. So flag down here on Gilman. Spalding now needs to clear the ball with nine seconds, get a free possession, and potentially double it up here. And then nice job coming out of the box in order to complete the clear. Now there's numbers. Garza all the way in oh, off the pipe for the pipe. second time tonight. Two. Wow. Bars for Diego Garza tonight. Again, in a two goal game. Game of inches. So, 30 second penalty coming. Spalding was able to convert on their first extra man opportunity of the game. And who else but PJ Pokeness? Now, five man up goals on the season. I'll tell you what, Glenn, this is, this is the point where the juices start flowing. I'm getting. Getting excited. Eight minutes left. Two goal game. Spalding has the ball here. I mean, this is where, this is where they're feeling it down on the field. They score here. The sideline's going to erupt. I might. Yeah, he might, I might jump toss out, both jump through of you the out of the box here. <laughs> right. Katie bar the door. Garza steps down. That one's Big saved. Save. Nice save by Chergot. Again, came in at the half. Still ten seconds to kill off the penalty. Haney runs it down. And we'll run out the final seconds gotta, on the penalty. They're ready to go early. They got an offensive midfielder who's tired. And they'll take a timeout with 7.25 remaining here in the fourth quarter. If you're just joining us, Gilman raced out to a four goal lead, 6 2, using a 5 0 run back in the first half. Spalding has a few times since then cut it back to a two-goal game, but they just haven't been able to get it closer than that. Does it feel, Andrew, at all like maybe they're playing against that burden a little bit, the burden of having had to constantly play from behind since that point? I feel like they've been opportunistic, and then they've just also you know, lost energy in a couple, couple spots. I mean, it, they've had a handful of, of opportunities either in, in transition, they had a couple of man-up opportunities, uh, a couple timely turnovers by Gilman, and they've taken advantage of those. But in between those moments, their energy level is kind of, you know, they've, they've taken a backseat to Gilman's. Um, but to your point, I, I think that Gilman's also had a few you know, favorable bounces here in the, sec sure. you know, the second half. And, you know, that's the difference right now in the game is, is two goals. And some of those were on the back of, of – you know, costly turnovers by Spalding in the, in the clearing game. So if the 725, plenty of lacrosse left here. If Spalding get a stop here, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they drop into the zone here. They've had success early in the game, but they got to clear the ball, get the ball on the offensive side of the field and let, let them go back to work. I have a feeling one's going to go for Diego here. He's he's paid the pipe God enough, right? right? He's had a, you know, ran a couple off the woodwork early. Um, you know, that's a different, it's a couple inches, right? So minor adjustment there. I think he's going to get on the board and, and cut this, cut this lead and make it, you know, an exciting finish here. And Sean, I feel like it's worth pointing out, yes, that it shows they've given up 10 goals tonight, but we know a few of those have been kind of cheapies and struggles in the clears. The defense, for the most part, has played really well tonight. Yeah, and, you know, I, I think the defense 
it's a lot it's of their goals. Back. Yep. Backups there. Nice right, I'm back. job. I'm wow. Back. Great. Yep. Yeah. I'm back. Yep. No. They even turned the lights on in here. I'm ready to go. Nihan with a great job of sort of knifing through in order to have a path to the end line. But, Glenn, to your point, I think Throw the flag. a lot of it, it was Gilman taking advantage of those transition opportunities um, and being aggressive. But other than that, I think Spalding has matched up well uh, when they've been settled defense. Um, it's just like the transition has, has been a little tough for them to cover. Under seven minutes to play in the fourth two-goal game. Spalding has not been within a goal since all the way back in the second quarter. Garza drops to the near side. Bennett won't force it. Back up top. Garza around the screen. Sends it back behind. Newell. Good hitch. I mean, Bennett, kind of a surprise take. Can't get it on target. Yeah, nice move there. 33 seconds remaining on the possession clock. And Andrew Newell Howell has a pop out of his mm. stick. Ground ball picked up by Wesson. So again, they'll ask your defense to rise to the occasion, get one more stop. Shut off the... Yes? What do you want him to do? I just, I, I think you, you have a pole carrying the ball down and you're 10 yards away from the midfield, the short stick midfielder. Shut off the shorty. Let the pole carry it because you know you're going to have a long pole who can switch to that and hopefully get a turnover instead of just standing there staring at the guys waiting for them to pass the ball. Maybe I'm not cut out for this color commentary. I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you're, a little too, you're a little too old to get a helmet and gloves <laughs> right, and go out right, there, right, so right. we, we got to find a this middle ground here. I, yeah, this is about all I got. Otherwise, Newman. I'm just locked in my house yelling at the TV. Well, oh, my that, gosh, I'm turning into what, my dad. That's what all the other days <laughs> of the week are for. <laughs> I'm becoming my father. Kaufman brings it up himself. Pulls oh, the trigger. Oh, let's go, oh. Jameson. Go on and get yourself some. Jamison Kaufman scores for the first time tonight, the fourth time this season, and it's a one-goal game with 518 remaining. How do wow. you like that? Frustration. I feel, I feel like we haven't called Jamison Kaufman's name much in, this in a game, while, yeah. but which can be a good thing sometimes. Playing solid defense, you know, but that's that's how Jamison can be dangerous. Saw the frustration at Chergat. That one just kind of ate him up. One of those slow bouncers, but little change ups. 5 18 remaining. One goal game. Did they blow? White ball. Yep, it's going that way. Let's go. And this broadcast is not biased. <laughs> One reminder that you're watching Archbishop <laughs> Spalding lacrosse. Now, that wasn't necessary. How are they going to? There were still 14 seconds remaining. There were 74 seconds. But it's that it's the aggressive defense by Gilman. It's almost like it caught Spalding off guard. But well, right there, they were worried about going back and over yeah. and back, despite the fact that they had time left in the 20 that's, seconds. That's that what I'm trying allowed. to yeah. say. Like that you, over yeah. and back right. only goes after you're under 60 seconds on right. the clock. There were 74 seconds there. You can go the other way. It's the mental, the mental errors. Been a few too many of them. Remarkable that it's still a one-goal game, despite how many of those there have been tonight. Spalding's defense really needs to bear down here. This is where you need to be communicating. You need to go all out. You have four minutes left, four and a half minutes left in the game. Everyone needs to be screaming at each other, talking to each other, make sure they have their back. Critical possession for Gilman. They can re-extend this to two. Another save. Nothing there. Newman. Shut the door on him. Holding that pipe. Catching it cleanly. Got to give it himself. Player. Hopper, Hopper happy to take it. Well, they'll let Bennett get the last step. Bennett trying to find some freedom. Bennett has it checked out of his stick. Ball still on the turf. And it's going the other way. Opportunity for transition. They're not going to force it. They'll slow it down. Maloney 
Again. Now asking you're asking your defense to one bail more you out time. Again. Should Hopper have kept going on that run? I, I think Gordy Bennett was coming across. He needs to be more aggressive as give me the ball, right? And he was trying to just say, Robbie, you go with it. But I think he was in a position that he could have you know, cut over. I, I, you want to see the ball on a short stick, right? If Robbie had to go, you know, I get it. But Robbie made the smart play to try to get it over to Gordy. Maloney. Up top to Wilkerson. Wilkerson dodging to his right. Sends it back behind Maloney. Good wow. tic-tac-toe, <laughs> but another way stop. To, way to find that ball by Jacob Newman. Jacob Newman has put on a show tonight. Kaufman brings it up. Not going to take it all the way in this time. You know, I know it's a spotting broadcast, but that ball movement by Gilman right there was, yeah. was <laughs> spectacular. Pretty amazing. Uh, unfortunately, you know, they didn't do it, you know, everything right. Could have put in the back of that big save there by Jacob Newman. Newman has been excellent this evening. I like we got here two shorties on the outside. Wilbur trying to get his hands free, being given nothing. Dumps it down to Duffy. Comes back up top. Good time to dodge here. Wilbur with the fake. Wilbur gets his hands free but can't Ooh. bounce it home. Race towards the corner. It's yep. staying here. 29 seconds remaining on the possession clock. 2.05 remaining in the game. One goal game. Spalding looking for an equalizer. Tell you what, I'm glad I'm not wearing stripes on that call. That one was too That's close tough. for comfort. Yeah. Real tough back in that corner. It almost felt like a tie goes to the runner type I, of situation. I think so. 15 on the shot clock here. Got to go. Got to go. 10 seconds back to Garza. Garza trying to knife his way through. Loses the ball. And it'll be picked up. Shergott gets it. Only a 20-second difference. Got to ride hard here. You would have time if you can finish this off. But do, do you have to double? Or do you say... We'll play for those 20 seconds. Sean, I'm asking you. You're, you're the defensive <laughs> specialist Andrew here. Andrew has so much wisdom, though. No, I, I, I think it's, it's a one-goal game. You play, you play the shot clock right now. All right. Um, I don't think there's a need to – well, they're, well, they're, they're, they're going to yeah, double. I mean, you're leaving yourself with only – at least at most 20 seconds in that situation. Well, they got to get back in the cage. And Newman's got to oh, get back Oh, what a there. save. <laughs> Does that count? It doesn't count as a reset. It doesn't look like they're saying he got a piece of it. No, oh, they now already, they're they signaling already for the reset. Them. Yep, they saw what you saw. So that will mean they will have to double now coming out of the timeout. It looked like uh, Newell got a stick on that ball as it was going towards the cage and just sent it right off. 53.8 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. Timeout taken, and they still haven't reset the clock yet. He, which is interesting, because it definitely did look like the they call. were signaling for a yeah, clock he, reset. But does it have to be the goalie to make a? Is it have to be a shot at gauge? I, I believe it, it has to be the goalie, right, to make contact to be. If somebody else is in the crease, in the crease and that, they make contact, I would believe that, that that would constitute a reset of the Obviously shot. Obviously, it's clock. not happening very often if we're having this conversation. Correct, yeah. but. Yeah, I've got to the, the answers. Are still talking about it right now. Maybe they're asking the same question we're asking, which is, what is the rule? I mean, it's not often you have a long pole diving into the cage, you know, making a stop like that. There's still well, the question though. is, what was he in the? It looked like it was he had his. Was he actually in the out. crease or not? Is what you're? It's possible he was outside of the crease. And the clock still not reset. 34 seconds, so that leaves a little bit of room to keep trying to defend. But again, I, as I keep talking about, Sean, if you just defend here, play straight up, they take that shot or even dump it into the yeah, corner. Yeah, then you're, then you're out. No, eight, I mean, I, 18 seconds is what you're dealing with at that point. Glenn, 
unlike you, I give credit where credit's due. Right? <laughs> so I think that. Well, if you ever deserved <laughs> any credit, I'd be willing to give it to you, Sean. I was given plenty of credit to Andrew earlier. He deserved it. No, great no, no. You're call. you're right. I mean, with with low time like that, they have to they have to double. It's 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 wishful thinking, um, to play straight up, but knowing Gilman's gonna oh, get gets the ball out. on the ground. Back on the turf. Huge ground great ball. Ground Will ball. Cook. 43 seconds. Got to clear. Comes down to Hopper. Hopper. Got Diego in the middle. And he finds him. So there's the clear. Got to get in the box. Got to score. Get in the box. Call timeout. 26 seconds remaining. Yeah, it should have been an extra second on the clock. I think you're right. But one more chance for Spalding here. All right, Andrew Scally, put your hat on. What are you drawing up in this timeout to try to even this game at 10 apiece? It's tough, right? I mean, you have a situation where you think you need to come out and draw up the perfect play. The problem with doing that, unless you've gotten repetition in practice day in and day out and you've run it in games against other defenses, it's challenging, right? You're dealing with high school kids here, right? I mean, it, in a, in a high-pressure situation, down one with 26 seconds, you can't draw up something new. So what I would do here, I would spin it once, I get right into that weave look, and I look for a skip. Uh, I might try and fade P.J. Pokness off the crease, mm -hmm. you know, maybe with a mumbo situation on the backside, but it's got to start with some initial ball movement, a hard dodge to score. They've done a good job drawing a short stick on a double team and having a throwback, so if they don't have that on the first look, look for a, a P.J. to kind of fade off the crease. Um, on the backside to get a, a righty, you know, righty step down shot, but um, I don't think you recreate the wheel here. I think you go back to the offense that's been working, put nine goals on the board for you today, and they're comfortable with it. Ideally, how much time when you take your shot? Again, I'm, I'm coming back to that 12 second yeah. mark. I mean, it gives you 14 to kind of work with, get the defense moving. It looks like Gilman is not in the zone based on the way they came out of that huddle. Um, I wouldn't be they're pressing out here on Diego, which makes sense given his, you know, dodging ability so far. So let's see what happens. But um, look for that weave look and a fade off the crease. Duffy sends it back behind. There's P.J. Oh, oh, no! oh, P.J. <laughs> Just like Andrew Scally drew it up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. We got a tie game. 17.3 seconds And just leading. like that. P.J. Pokeness delivering in the clutch. They didn't waste time. They went right to it, and we got a tie game. And I think I think Andrew might be getting some phone calls for some coaching <laughs> positions after this broadcast. Wow. I'll be your agent. <laughs> I want my cut, too, though. Wow, that is. Let's get another I mean, one here. There's time. There is time. Face-off win for Criswell, but he loses it. Now you got to get back. Get settled. Ten seconds left. Trail check. It's going to be wide. There will be backup there as the Schlein shot was impacted. 4.9 seconds remaining. There was one timeout remaining, apparently. So yeah. Gilman takes their final timeout here with five seconds left. If you're on defense here, you got to check sticks because they're going to try to more than likely try to force it into the crease, try to get some kind of shot. I, I you just don't, don't know. want him to be able to yeah. catch the ball. I mean, it's about, yeah, because you got to get from you got to get from goal line up to goal line extended in about four seconds and get a shot off. So I wouldn't be surprised, Andrew, you can you can tell me, but I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to feed something into the middle here or do a little pick play with, you know, get it, them off. Yeah, it's, it's going to be something cheap. So you just got, like you said, match feet, check stick sticks. On, yeah, check yep. sticks and, and come down on gloves and, uh, you know, hope for some overtime here. Let's go back to the other side for a second. How about Joey Matassa? who ha we haven't seen a ton of tonight being the one to operate that from back behind the cage. Yeah, you, you love this seat. I mean, we've, we've talked about inexperience all season, right? I think that excuse is, is worn out, and, you know, you have guys stepping up and making plays, and, you know, that's one of them. First assist, first point of the game from Matassa, his third assist, sixth point of the year, and P.J. Pokeness with the hat trick tonight, 18th goal of the season. 4.9 seconds left. I'm gonna, I asked Paul if he could play that goal again because I want to show you what was going on in the crease when P.J. was coming down. It was uh, Let's first make sure they there get were this some guys working. Here. There were some guys working hard in the crease. Uh, good contact, no angle. Good job of hanging on there with Wollison, and we will go to overtime. Scrappy. 
Scrappy from Spalding to come back and tie it up. So we got a race to one now. So here's that goal. Did you see that? I want to see if we can go back one more time. But you'll see in the crease. You'll see right over here. I can't see whose jersey it is, but he's just look at look at him setting it. Big pick against 16. Yeah. Yep. That was that was that Jack Newell. Jack Newell was just bodying up on 16, kind of just running into him a little bit. Set the perfect pick for PJ. You'll see him right there. He's almost driving him back. He got two guys there. He Pay picked off 16 and 11. Pays the price for it. Hey, but worth it. Jack Newell was working hard to set those picks. There deserves to be some yeah. sort of statistic that records that. Was, that. That was a great, great effort by Jack Newell. Great feed, great finish by Pokeness. Can we get him a, a second assist? Can we gift him an additional assist somehow? On uh, that we can do what we that, want. That's yeah. true. We can do what we want up here in the booth. We're those giving things, it to him. Those things don't show up on the stat sheets, but dang, do those get pointed out in film? And you know, because those are the unsung heroes. The guy, the guy setting the pick, people rarely remember. That's the guy putting in the back of the net. So, an awesome moment for sure but still work to be done as we go to overtime. Race to one, first team that scores wins, and it makes these overtime, the drama of an overtime faceoff almost cannot be matched within this sport. It's not like it used to be in the pre-shot clock era where, you know, you want to face off, nobody else was going to see the ball during that overtime session, yep. but the value of winning the faceoff is just so unbelievably critical here oh, in overtime. Absolutely. Criswell. And it's something where, you know, like it's ball, what Andrew said, maybe it was 50 50. Uh, was, it, what, was it clearing or face offs um, today? But Probably about both at yeah, this point. So it's going to be huge. Expect Robbie Hopper to fly in there. And Criswell catch, and get Kim, a ball the turf. The freshman for Gilman. And the ground ball is going to belong to the Greyhounds as it was scooped up by Schlein. So you ask your defense to come up with one more stop tonight. They have, they have it in them. They've had a ton of them. They're saying it's easy, guys. Clear. So right now, shut off adjacents and let Robbie Hopper. Yeah, they really call that timeout. But so. see there, when you have Robbie Hopper matched up on a pole, I'm telling everyone, you're, I mean, you're going to have your call, whatever Evan call, whatever call he has, sh block, shut off the adjacents and just let Robbie Hopper go to work. Sure. Right, and that's and, but you know Gilman saw that and they called their time. I actually was wondering if they were worried at all that Collins was going to try to take that in and take the shot, and Tony and Contra was saying no, 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 <laughs> no. Call a time that's not what one. we're doing here in overtime. I, I don't think he wanted the ball. I honestly, he was looking for his outlets there, okay. and, and that's exactly why you know Sean, you're right. You got to apply a little pressure, knowing that he wasn't running down the field to shoot or make a play. He was simply trying to get the ball in the box, find his attackman, and let them go to work. But either way, they got the timeout call, and, you know, the most important defensive possession is, is right here for Spalding. So, obviously, two huddles. Coach Hockle hopefully drawing up something, identifying the matchups, uh, put the ball on the deck, and get up and out, get the ball back on the offensive side. Defense has played well, but Newman, Jacob Newman, has just been exceptional tonight. Came in tonight. Stopping 48.4% of the shots that he has faced. He has been, at times, brilliant in this game. Absolutely. Might need him one more time here. As the Greyhounds have an opportunity for a golden goal. Both teams looking for their second A-conference win on the season. And this could end up being critical terms of who's going to get into the postseason. I mean, Glenn, that's that time where your heart's pounding, you're tired, but your adrenaline is just flowing through your body. Wilson makes a good move. That's Hopper a great with an unbelievable check. trail check. Patience. Robbie Hopper's patience, I think, is what sets him Might apart. draw a flag here. He's getting aggressive. There and we go. They're going to take the timeout. So the clear from Ruiz, and Brian Phipps takes his timeout. Robbie Hopper again. Again. Again, and Andrew Scally is telling us that the hairs on his arm are literally standing up. He's got goosebumps. He's got goosebumps. The goosebumps are alive. The goosebumps are alive right now. What a and what a day! What a season you for could, Robbie Hopper. You could feel you could feel the electricity right now. I mean, that is just that is a hell of a play from a hell of a player. 
and you almost felt like it was coming. Like the moment the step was there, oh, it, it almost feels like he's goading you into it. Like, you, go ahead, get and, your step. And we've seen it all season. It's just, it's the patience to know that I'm okay, right? He's going to have to bring a stick back. And he just, you see him, he's got his composure. And as soon as that guy brings a stick back to shoot or pass, Robbie's there to knock it out of the stick. I mean, here's the deal. That was best on best, right? The ball's in Gilman's best player's yep. stick. And who's on him? The best defender on Spalding, right? That was just a heavyweight bout right there, and that, that's who both people wanted involved in that play. Fortunately for Spalding, you know, Hopper made the play at the end and was patient, he's, right. and he's shown that the entire time. Again, we talked about coming into the game, 18 calls turnovers. He's probably got three or four tonight. Andrew, you drew up the tying goal. Draw up the winner for us. Hmm. If only we had hmm. – if only if he could pull a John Madden, we had some kind of screen here. Right. Where we could draw. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Tough acting, ten acting. You put the popcorn in the popcorn popper. I wish I had a play for you. I, I, again, I think you go back to your, you know, your normal offense. You try and get some movement up top in the weave look and, and find that shorty shorty matchup to dodge against. Comes to the near side. Wilbur trying to get a step. Wilbur dodges back to his right. Moves it along. Garza, he's hit two pipes tonight. Does he have a winner? Big dodge right here. Plenty Bennett of room. From up top. Started to his right. Ball kind of popped out for a second. Able to recollect. Plenty so of time. 40 seconds. Bennett backs off. We'll reset. We Glenn, set Glenn, play can here. you hear my heart pounding out of my chest right now? Bennett flips it. Is that what that was? Yep. Fake. Garza trying to get inside. Loses a stick. Hold. Yep. Keep oh. it down here. That's a good That's a good call. And they got away with one. I mean, it, it could have been yep. with possession right there and gotten a flag, but they let him play and... He hit him with a little windshield wiper. Yep. You got a 60-second reset there on the shot clock. Bennett. Bennett. <sighs> nice mm. save. Is mm. that the shot? It's tough. Lefty on the run, down the alley, low angle. Uh, plenty of time on the clock. Shergott collects the save. Transition the opposite way. Skip pass. Another save. Save, save, save by Newman. Jacob Newman. <laughs> Jacob gobbled Maloney. that one up. Had gotta a clear great it. Look gotta low. clear it. He got help with the box. He's got to come back to the ball. Dangerous pass. Kaufman looking for it. Can't find it. It's got to be white. And it comes back to Gilman. They're going to throw it away. Oh, no. Oh, what heartbreak. Bo Webster. Newman came out to try to play the ground ball. Bo mm. Webster comes up with it. Newman tries to race back to the cage. But Webster delivers the game winner in overtime, his third of the night, and the Greyhounds are victorious 11 to 10. That's a tough one, honestly, but I, I think Spalding learned a lot about themselves tonight. I think that was a huge game, uh, both momentum-wise for the rest of the season, but also for these young guys that are coming up. I mean, you have three games in conference so far. You played a tough team here tonight in Gilman. You, have two you got the more upcoming schedule. I mean, up. it's it's a great way to kind of kick that off. So I mean, two more big MIA games. I mean, Boys Latin and Severn. Those are two games that are really going to be important for Spalding. Oh, this one's painful though. There's it's kind of getting no getting over that. This is a painful, painful setback. You you dwell on it tonight. You wake up tomorrow and you get ready for Ken Island. Go back to right. You get ready. You you watch some film. You get yourself ready to go. Gilman improves to four and five on the season, two and one in conference play. Spalding drops to four and seven on the year, one and three in the conference. I want to thank everybody who joined us tonight for our broadcast, everyone who made it possible, Paul Garza, his entire team. Sean Andrew, it was great to be back with you guys. We we're treated to a heck of a lacrosse game tonight. Absolutely. Can't ask for – it would have nice to win it, but you can't ask for a lot more. No, it's, 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 it's exciting. Glad to be back with you, Glenn. We will be back with you again next week. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Again, your final score <sighs> in overtime. Gilman, 11. Archbishop Spalding, 10. The entire crew, I am Glenn Clark. This has been Archbishop Spalding Lacrosse.